Hello everybody and welcome to the studio. It is me Gideon, also known as Gideon Slight, and I'm your creatively fit coach. <laughs> this is week eight in our journey this year in our art journal. And currently we draw inspiration from abstraction. Now, in a particular, my theme or prompt for this week is to think about atmospheric influence, particularly that of rain and how that influences our world. And I drew inspiration from that. And this is what I created in my art journal today. So I will be showing you exactly how I did that. But you might also notice this beautiful little unicorn looking at you. This is what I painted yesterday in a live session here on my channel. So if you want to see how I did that in watercolor, just check out my live playlist and paint along. Then do feel free to take a photograph of your unicorn or of your creative exercise and share it with me on the Creative Heart group on Facebook. All the links are in the description below. And also, if you're new here, remember to hit that subscribe button and the like button so that you don't miss out on a single episode. I do these weekly prompts every Monday so that you don't have to wonder what you could possibly do in the, in the few minutes that you do have available to be creative. So let's get into it. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to the studio. It is exciting to get into today's prompt and I've already got everything set out and prepared for us to play with today's inspiration and prompt. But before we get started, let's light a candle and just set an intention to connect with our creative higher self and uh, we're going to have some fun and play today. And just explore our beautiful world through paint and creativity and let's have a bit of a break from all the logic and all the must do's and responsibilities and look a little bit towards nourishing our inner child with play experimentation and self-expression so my wish today for the world is just to Chill out and take a deep breath in. Remember to smell the roses and um, also to have some fun because life is too short to always be so serious, right? <laughs> okay, so today's prompt for you guys is to be inspired by atmospheric influence. That sounds very abstract and interesting. And for today, we're going to focus on rain and the influence that rain has on our environment and we're going to draw some inspiration from that so let's just make some mental notes here and draw some inspiration from these words okay so we're looking at the atmospheric influence forgive me if i spell something wrong here and our main Kunain here today is rain. Okay, so what does rain bring us? We have humidity. That's a factor. And from that we can get mold. Mold can be very interesting. Uh, we have storms. And obviously we, we have clouds. It can bring chaos. That unexpected moment we have floods we have wetness and uh, it can suddenly happen and we have lightning we have thunder so there's a sound and then we have that splitter splatter of raindrops So we have beautiful sounds. Now, if we have to represent this with shapes, I'm thinking of flood could maybe be like a river flow. We can see raindrops as a shape.
you get the gist of that. Yeah, we have lightning. That's sudden. We have little pools of water that crisscross over each other as a little droplet falls on them. So we could play with that. I quite like that. So there's a lot of shape. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of lines that can be drawn from in our artwork today. So I'm going to put this aside. It's going to be my inspiration as we get into this uh, page in our art journal. So I went to my prompt box a little bit earlier, earlier because honestly, I was a bit stumped. Um, switching from unicorn energy. We had so much fun yesterday painting the unicorn in watercolor. If you want to also join in on that, that was my free lesson for the month and it is available on my um, YouTube channel. Just check out my uh, live open studio um, playlists. You will definitely find it there and it was a lot of fun. So to switch my brain from being very objectified, looking at a unicorn and switch it to a very abstract kind of idea that we have here, atmospheric influence rain. I drew a few of these cards out of my prompt box. I didn't want to bore you with digging through all of these little cards. So I literally just mingled it all together, threw it out on my table and just dived in there. And this is literally what I drew. Uh, I literally drew acrylic paint and I was wanting to get into my acrylic paint. Abstraction, and that is exactly what we're busy with this month. I got a... Uh, uh, composition of S curve here that we're going to draw inspiration from and movement was one of the design principles that came forward and I think that will be so relevant to our theme and then the first color I drew was blue and then I sort of played with a color chart further for myself so I took the color blue and I decided to work with my favorite tetraic kind of color scheme so I also used green because I quite love the idea of playing with mold. I've got some violet and I've got some orange. Now the orange we might represent in browns or whatever that kind of thing could be. So who knows what today's lesson is going to bring for us. So I did prepare two pages and the main reason for that is my art journal's paper is really thin. I mean it can't take a lot of hammering. I'm just putting my prompt cards there on my prompt box so that we can reference them the whole time. So I've got here some Bristol paper. I've also sealed it on the outside because we want to maybe play with a bit of watery effects today. So I thought of doing a base layer on my main page of my art journal, which I also rounded off nicely with some masking tape. And then to play on this paper with the actually watery effects of some sorts. So we will do that in two stages. So we're going to start here with our main page today. And we are going to play. So I thought what I should do, I'm going to use my um, silver acrylic paint. And I'm just going to give this page a base layer um, to sort of just strengthen this paper a little bit. And then I'm going to build my moldy kind of look on top of that. I did dig out of my art supplies a sponge that my precious doggy got hold of. But I didn't throw it away because now I've got this interesting texture on this side that I think will be excellent for using as a printer to create a bit of a mold-like effect. Okay, so let's start with preparing our page. And I've got my silver here. And I'm just going to get it directly onto the page here. I'm not too worried about the center of this page because I'm going to collage another piece of paper on top of it. So let me grab my paint mover and let's get this silver as a nice foundation on this page. Now you can see the silver is nice and translucent as metallics can be. And we're just going to give our page here a bit of strength by giving it a little bit of a acrylic layer that will definitely seal our page. You can see how thirsty this paper is. 
It's okay if the page dries on me. It's really hot here in South Africa today. And um, it's okay to use a little bit more paint. I don't use silver a lot, so it's not too precious um, for me as a paint color. So I don't mind using that expensive brand here as a playful underground. I love these paint movers. Have you ever played with it? Do you have a paint mover or a catalyst? Which is your favorite tool to play with? Or maybe you prefer palette knives. I think this all sort of was um, inspired uh, through palette knives. I think that's sort of the mother of these tools. And I really think that, uh, you know, I want to give credit to um, abstract artists that had to create their own tools in order to create interesting marks and finishes to their paintings. And um, then from there, I think these tools just evolved and uh, companies always look to see where they can help create tools that are beautiful and interesting and useful to artists everywhere to improve you know, our work and what we can do with them. So thank you to whoever designed this amazing tool. I've decided to really move this paint over this entire page, seeing that this paper is so thin. And even though we're going to collage on top of it, I just want to seal this paper. Now, I bought this art journal off the internet, and it's really hard to sort of know what you're getting. So I've learned something about looking at the grams or the weight of the paper. Um, I must check again what the weight of these paper was. I think it was something ridiculous like 50 GSM. So it's really a lightweight paper. Um, I don't know what exactly these people thought we're going to do on these papers. But in the first few weeks playing with watercolor, I've really learned that this paper is very thin and it's very hard. I just turn the page and it tears. So I don't know if this art journal is going to survive the year, to be very honest with you, because it's supposed to make my life easier, not harder. <laughs> Let's add a little bit more there. So I was going to grab the gray as a nice foundation to build the mold on. And then my eye saw the silver and I thought, no, I haven't worked with the silver in a long time. So let's rather use the silver than the just the gray. Because now we've got that added sort of finish to our paint, which I think also speaks of atmospheric influence. This silvery gray color reminds me sometimes of what the sky looks like when we are getting rain. So I'm just going to turn the page a little bit like this so that you guys can maybe see the reflections. And um, oh, I absolutely love that glimmer of the metallic silver. So I'm going to allow this to dry. It's going to dry very quickly anyway. But um, in the meantime, let us mix some color that we're going to use our little sponge with. And I want to create a moldy kind of green. This almost looks like mold to me. So I'm going to be inspired by that. I just want to put my oil pastels aside just for now because we're going to play with that on the other page shortly. Alrighty, let me get my paints out here. I quite like this fern yellowy kind of limey green. So I think I'm going to dispense some of that. Some mold uh, that I know grows on rocks looks like that. Let's add a little bit of lavender just as a, another tone to play with. I've got some phthalo green, but I actually need my sap green. I think sap green will be better because the phthalo green can be so phthalo, iridian. <laughs> It's very blue and it's translucent. So I'm going to grab my sap green. I think a yellow green is going to do much better in the sense of mold. 
I quite like that. Let's add a little bit of dark brown as well. We do need a bit of depth. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of this phthalo blue as well. I didn't bring black out um, today. I think black can sometimes be very flat. So let's play with this. Oh, yes, and we need a bit of white as well. Definitely need a bit of white. I'm going to put that there. Awesomeness. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this sponge and we're going to maybe lay a foundation with a little bit of this dark brown. I'm even going to bring in a little bit of my Prussian blue. And I'm now just using this uneven texture of this sponge. Oh, that's perfect. To just lay in a bit of a darker foundation. And every here and there with this gaps in the sponge, that silver is going to still glimmer through. So it's just going to give us a bit of a structure here. A bit of a foundation to build that moldy kind of look. So I'm going to build a frame out of this mold. And then on the other page, we're going to collage that in the center. And we're going to play with some of the other atmospheric influence words and medium. So I think I'm going to play a little bit with alcohol today, with water, obviously, and um, maybe some resist techniques as well. Play with the oil pastel and see how it can resist my water. I think that is a good beginning. Now let's get into this green and I'm going to mix the two together. I'm sorry, I'm holding the thing in my hand and you guys can't see what I'm doing. So I'm doing a bit of a mixture here, as you can see. And now I'm not going to press so hard. I'm just going to stamp. And let's jump around our page so that we have these mixtures all over. So I'm just going to create a nice moldy kind of finish. And I'm just experimenting. I'm drawing inspiration from what is around me. And uh, I was digging through my paint with this idea of doing some mold. And then I found this sponge that my puppy had chewed. <laughs> he had this in his mouth. And um, I nearly threw it away. And then I thought, but wait, that could make an interesting mark. So it's always interesting for me how we attract things to us for the day and um, how we can literally make use in the moment of what is available to us. Okay, let's add a little bit of this lavender and a bit of white. And I'm not even rinsing the sponge because I know that these colors will make an impact on each other and it will start to sort of create mud. And when I say mud, I mean like a bit of a neutral shade of a color that's not so vibrant and intense because mold can be quite dull albeit green or gray depending on what kind of mold we are talking about now i'm actually sort of doing a combination here of mold and what is that stuff called that's growing on rocks is it lichens or something oh god i could be completely off my um, National Geographic here. <laughs> Why don't you guys drop me a comment if you know what the sort of moss-like plants that grows on rocks is called. Please drop me a comment and tell me and then I can also remember that word. Otherwise I'll have to dig into Google and ask Google what that is called. I'm sure it's like lichens or something sounding like like that. That's fun to just play with our paint and 
not be so serious about creating very specific things and yet we are <laughs> Okay, let's see where we can just break down some of these colors a little bit. Oh, my arm is getting lame. <laughs> my shoulder having to hold this up and press this down is a workout. You see, creating art even has a workout effect on you. I like that. Okay, so we've got a a nice moldy finish here moldy mossy I know the two aren't directly related but you know forgive me it could be either okay now I don't want to overwork this page I think that sort of works well let's just quickly hold our now blank page that we're going to collage with later over the center yes that's looking good okay so I'm gonna put this aside to dry and then when I come back I'm gonna play on that other paper and we're gonna just have some fun awesomeness so I removed the tape and I brought my art journal back so you guys can see how this is all going to come together now I forgot my camera was off but I did want to play with a soft minty green a little bit as well just to connect some of the greens that we have in the moss here into the clouds maybe I feel like we could do with a bit more of a contrast here in the clouds that feels a bit better to me that feels good I'm wondering about this orange raindrops it sort of stands out a little bit too much for me so I guess I'm gonna play with a bit more so I've got this arctic blue 
let me just get another brush I'm gonna fill these droplets in I'm gonna leave the edge this is the the fun thing about paint is you know when you do something and in the end you don't like it you can always paint over it again there's no rule <laughs> and it's my art journal so I can do what I want now this brush is freaking terrible I'm just gonna throw it away it's just not doing what I want it to do for me so let's find another brush let's see if this one will cooperate a little bit more oh my word this one is just as bad what is up with my stuff today in the studio do you guys also have days where it feels to me like my art supplies is just not cooperating I mean goodness gracious me Okay, I guess we're moving on to the next droplet. I think that's one of the frustrating bits to any artist, but especially to artists that is coming into a creative practice and they have this romantic idea that they're going to paint like they see in some of the videos and some people's you know, I've got this amazing brush and amazing um, paint and it just glides on. Have you seen some of those TikTok videos or Instagram videos? I absolutely love watching these people. I mean, it feels like a single brush stroke and it looks masterful, absolutely perfection. But I promise you that I've sped it up and you're only seeing one bit of it. You're definitely not seeing the whole thing. <laughs> and it can sort of leave you with the impression that it should be easy. And um, then when you go and do it, then you get days like today where things feel streaky and it's just not coming together and you wonder, is it me? Is it my environment? Is it my art supplies? Is it my brush? Is it all of it? Well, today feels like that to me. So, proves to you that, you know, all artists have days where it just feels like things aren't coming together the way that you envisioned from the beginning. Now, that feels a little bit better to me. I mean, orange raindrops, it's very abstract, isn't it? I'm going to fiddle with this paint until it does what I want it to do. I really just want a nice droplet. Okay, well, let's let that dry. I think I will fiddle with it off camera a bit more. It might need more than one coat, so it's just the way the cookie crumbles. And yet here I am, carrying on. I can hear you guys say, just leave it. But you know me. Okie dokie. I'm going to smash this. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I like this. I like this. Remembering what the prompt is. Now we have to stick this down on our page that we've got here. And we've got beautiful mold and moss or whatever you want to call that growing on our page and um, yeah I'm gonna call it a day I'm gonna stick this down all right to you guys this is the final <laughs> little video of what we did today I just wanted to give you an eagle's eye point of view and just zoom in for you guys on this atmospheric influence of rain I do love the textures and all of the line work. I love my lightning bolt that finally sort of came together. 
and this goes for my ink little dots as well with the alcohol <laughs> that took a double tag we have our grey from our clouds we have some raindrops with some beautiful metallic orange edges we've got some beautiful ring work there that I scraped into the paint to create these little rings of water and then we also have the splatter that we added last and in our moss or in our mold that is growing here we have got the beautiful elements of silver that gives us a beautiful clean edge and now you can see that I removed the tape from around the edge and that just brings in a little bit of clarity and order it contains all of this chaos and it sort of neatens it up a little bit for me because there is plenty going on in this image today so anyways here you are you guys thanks for watching remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because i give weekly creative art prompts for you guys that you can use as inspiration to go to your art journal and to create and to learn from that experience so i hope you enjoyed this i'll see you guys again next week stay creative and bye bye for now